What's up, everybody? You're listening to Obsidian Radio News. I am your host, Mumia Obsidian Ali. It is Wednesday, July 19th, 2017. Welcome to the program. Glad you can make it. And thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Over on my other YouTube channel, I discussed a recent column that I wrote in response to a notion that if men just took some kind of personal action, that they would somehow lessen the chances of being falsely accused of date rape. I call bullshit on that notion. And if you want to hear what I had to say in my op-ed opinion and commentary on the matter, you'll be able to access that podcast by going to the first link, or actually the second link in the comment section below. The first link is going to be to this news story I'm about to read to you, which I mentioned in the aforementioned commentary. This has to do with the so-called Mattress Girl, also known as Emma Sokowitz, a student at the prestigious Columbia University in New York City. This comes by way of Yahoo News.com on July 15, 2017. Headline, Columbia University has settled with the male student accused in the Mattress Girl rape case. This was written by Wei Nin Yu. And again, it was published on July 15th, 2017. This week, Columbia University made an undisclosed settlement with Paul Nungesser, the male student at the center of the Mattress Girl rape case. If that doesn't ring a bell, let's rewind. In 2012, then Columbia University student Emma Sokowicz accused Paul Nungesser, another student at the time, of raping her on her first day of classes their sophomore year. Nungesser claimed the sex was consensual. After Sokowitz filed a complaint with the university, a discipline, disciplinary panel held a hearing and felt, found Nungesser not responsible for the alleged crime. Two other students also accused Nungesser of sexual assault. Sokowitz felt the university mishandled a case and turned her outrage into a powerful piece of performance art entitled Mattress Performance Carry That Weight. For a year, she carried a 50-pound mattress around campus in protest of the school's decision. The university gave her academic credit for her project, it was her senior art thesis, and even allowed her to carry the mattress on stage during her graduation ceremony. Nungesser, meanwhile, says he found himself ostracized and condemned after the allegations and the art piece, so so he sued columbia university a week before graduation according to the new york times nungesser sued for supporting what he called an outrageous display of harassment and defamation by giving miss sokowitz academic credit for her project in a statement columbia said of the settlement columbia recognizes that after the conclusion of the investigation paul's remaining time at columbia became very difficult for him and not what Columbia would want of any of its students to experience. Columbia will continue to review and update its policies toward ensuring that every student, accuser and accused, including those like Paul, who were found not responsible, is treated respectfully as a full member of the Columbia University community. For her part, Sokowitz has been very vocal on many occasions about the difficulties of speaking out about her experience and the effects the alleged rape have had on her life, she told Elle magazine in an interview. During mattress performance, people were speaking as if they had some sort of expertise or that they knew what happened in that room that night. We actually do know what happened in that room that night, Emma. We all saw the videotape that you put online. I know I saw it, and I didn't see any rape happening there. I saw her giving up the ass, and he hit it, and then he was out. We're going to discuss that more in a moment. Let's continue. The other thing that was really interesting slash frustrating was how many people were saying, well, a real rape survivor would never carry a mattress. A real rape survivor would not do this. And I was like, huh, what? In many campus rape cases... The well-being of the accused is made paramount to the well-being of the victim. A high-profile case last year involving former Stanford student Brock Turner offers a prime example. 
he was found guilty of three counts of sexual assault but was sentenced to just six months in jail time because a longer sentence would have had a severe impact on him according to the judge in his case he was released after a mere three months survivors meanwhile suffer an array of lifelong physical and mental health consequences as experiencing rape while there was progress for campus rape victims under the Obama administration, most notably its on, its on Us campaign and a move by the Education Department to investigate sexual assault related Title IX violations by some schools, the Trump administration is turning back the clock, revisiting the 1972 law known as Title IX that has provided some recourse for survivors and opening the door for those accused of rape to tell their stories. According to the New York Times, Candace E. Jackson, who heads the Education Department's Office for Civil Rights, believes she sees a red flag that's something not quite right about how Title IX has been used in campus rape cases and that the rights of accused students too often have been ignored. Additionally, Education Secretary Betsy Davos has already met with several men's rights groups. According to... Yes! Yeah, baby. According to ABC, she's had meetings with the National Coalition for Men and organizations that speak out on behalf of those accused of sexual assault, such as families advocating for campus equality and stop abusive environment and violent environments. Though she refuses to say what exactly the Trump administration plans to do regarding campus rape allegations, survivors advocates are concerned about the move to protect those accused of rape there's a popular narrative that survivors and advocates want to create secret hearing processes that automatically throw accused students out of school but nothing could be further from the truth said Sajal Singh a policy and advocacy coordinator for Know Your Nine in an interview with Glamour magazine we often see schools deny these rights such as adequate time to prepare for hearings and opportunities to present evidence to survivors tilting investigations in favor of abusers by guaranteeing these rights to both sides we can make sure school disciplinary procedures are more fair the road ahead for campus rape survivors seeking justice seems foggy but we're glad advocates refuse to remain silent so that is the Yahoo News story Columbia University has settled with the male student accused in the mattress girl rape case I talked about that case in my commentary over on my other YouTube channel how it was utter bullshit and like I mentioned earlier the actual video of the sex that went down between Paul and Emma was made available to the public for at least a time anyway by Emma Sokowitz herself I viewed that tape several times as a matter of fact hard for me to find out how you know Paul raped Emma I didn't see it in that tape now if somebody out there has seen it in that tape by all means come on with it explain to me how based on that tape assuming you've seen it like me that was rape and see I'm glad that that videotape was available and Columbia University came to the right decision because there's just no evidence of her of, of Paul Nungesser raping Emma Sokowitz as I've said in my commentary over on my other channel, this sort of thing will continue to happen so long as there is no uh, reform in the criminal law as it regards these sorts of issues. So long as women like Emma Sokowitz can go around crying wolf and actually, you know, making a mini career out of it, while at the same time ruining the lives of innocent men like Paul Nungesser, it will never stop. We have to have reform in the law that that meets out stiff penalties for women who falsely accuse men of rape. When that happens, you'll see the incentives kicking in to change women's behavior. I am very, very hopeful. I had no idea that the Trump administration was actually giving an audience to men's rights activist groups and the like. I need to reach out to Paul Elam on this one and get his reaction and response. But that's something that I was always hoping would happen. I've told a lot of people that the Trump presidency will be a good thing for men because finally the interests and concerns of men will get a fair hearing and we will get redress for our grievances. So this is a good thing. And I think what's going to end up happening is that we are going to see reform in the criminal law. I mentioned over on my other YouTube channel about Carnell Smith, who's done a superlative job in the state of Georgia, bringing in 
criminal law reform as it relates to paternity fraud. So all these people out there talking about whining and complaining, men whining and complaining, ain't going to do anything. You can't change women's behavior. That's bullshit. We can change their behavior. You have to know how the United States of America works. It does work. And we're going to continue to make it work here at Obsidian Radio News. Which is news by an everyday brother for everyday brothers. Don't forget to check out my piece over on my other YouTube channel. Again, it'll be the second link in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of these developments. Whether you agree or disagree, I so greatly and deeply appreciate that. You're listening to Obsidian Radio News with your host and your correspondent, Mumia Obsidian Ali. This is a News Digest podcast channel that deals with news for men news by an everyday brother for everyday brothers and if you like what it is that we're doing here on a daily basis bringing news by an everyday brother for everyday brothers here in news digest format that is to say less than 15 minute segments 15 minute segments or less i should say then what the heck are you waiting for head on over to my patreon page and put five on it Become one of the 300 Patreons I need to stay on the air getting bigger and better. The address is www.patreon.com slash Mumia Obsidian Ali. And for those who wish to be private PayPal donors, all you need to do is hit up yours truly first at the Obsidian Files at Hotmail or at gmail.com. Put in the subject line donations and I'll walk you through from there. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to obsidian radio news until next time peace i am out of here